Hey guys, it's Adam. I want to take a moment and personally thank you for listening to our shows, for downloading our shows, and for sharing them with your friends. With your guys' support, we just moved the Twisted 10 into the threshold of the top 100 comedy shows in iTunes. It made it to number 99. Granted, just barely crept in there. However, that's still monumental for us. Out of the tens of thousands of podcasts that are out there, that's one of the most difficult categories to breach into. Thank you very, very much for helping us to get there. If you haven't already done so, please go give us a five-star rating and give us a review, a short little one-line, two-line review, letting us know that you enjoy the show. iTunes reviews are like podcast currency. It legitifies the show, it allows us to get better guests, and it allows our sponsors to really see that we're reaching the listeners that are out there. If you haven't done so yet, please go do it. We would greatly appreciate it. We've got a ton on the horizon from Dichotomy Media, a lot more on our YouTube channel, more Get Out Penny cartoons, all sorts of stuff. So please help us by giving us that five-star rating and a little review. Thank you very much and enjoy the show. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, all three engines up and burning, 2, 1, 0, and lift off. 5, 10, 3, 4. You're listening to The Twisted Ten, bringing you original and unique post-created top ten lists, recorded live in world-famous Cocoa Beach, Florida, with hosts Tack Van Sickle, Adam Poston, Jay Alvarez, and me, Andrea Joy. And welcome to another episode of The Twisted Ten. Hi, hi. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm Adam. I'm one of your regular hosts. However, I'm not your host this week, sitting over on the Lady Chase. Hi, I'm Andrea Joy, and I am not one of your hosts this week. Uh-oh. Jay is out, hey. by the way. I know I'm jumping ahead of you, Tack. It's all, okay. But Jay is out. There's no Jay this week. His tummy's not feeling very good. Aww. You know what, though? <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm kind of, you know what? If somebody's sick, just kidding, I kind of prefer them not to come over. You know what I mean? Not to spread yeah. that germ. Yeah, I don't want to be sick. By the way, I'm Tack. Hi, everybody. Hi, Tack. Hi, Tack. Hi. Jay's obviously not a host. He's no, not Jay's not the host. I don't and have Skype up. Are you sure? No Skype up. Can't see it. I can't see it. Nope. Oh, I'm the host. I'm yeah. the host this week. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I forgot. Goddamn, it's been like, what, three months since you've hosted all yeah, these? Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. And uh, I've been wanting to do one for so long, but Adam, you wouldn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> you see our group calendar. It ain't just me. <laughs> I know. Okay, so welcome to the Twisted Ten. If this is your first time coming on or listening to the show, what we do here... Gross. <laughs> What we do here is we uh, we create an original top 10 list. Number 10. Oh, that wasn't. We're not there yet. Oh. We create an original top 10 list. Sometimes we have guest hosts that come in through Skype or in the studio or what have you. Um, and we create an original top 10 list. And then what we do with that, Adam, oh, is yeah. we take that list. Mm. We pack it up in a bag nice oh, and tight. yeah. Nice and tight. Then we put it uh, in the trunk of our car. Mm. And then we drive... Oh. That's exactly what he sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm pooping. Gross. <laughs> and then we take that bag and we drive it from here to Kentucky. Like a Kentucky? Like Kentucky. what part? Like Frankfurt? No. That's God, Germany. No. That's like about, about a, it's like an hour east of that. Oh, okay. Okay. And we drive it there and then we get out and we take that bag and we <laughs> hand it off. <laughs> we hand it off to, to Billy Bob Joe, Schmeines. Joe Sean. Schmineys. Yeah. Schmineys. Yeah. I know Schmineys. the Schmineses. <laughs> you know they, they, yeah, they run a butter churning factory. And they take our list. It's in a bag. They take it. You should know them. We've done this like six times now. <laughs> and they take the Schmineys, take the list, and then they they put it on a boat. Okay, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> yeah, a boat in Kentucky? <laughs> yeah. It's a lake, and they oh. take it to the other side of the lake. Oh. Anywho, we, t- we take we bring an original top ten list and we talk about it, we break it down, and we just hack it up. You know, I'm going to cut out all that other stuff, right? No. No, I'm kidding. Aww, I'm not. You're so mean. He looked, Andrea, he looks so sad when I said <laughs> he that. He worked all afternoon on that. I did. Couldn't you tell? <laughs> the, and the, the Schmineys was very well thought out, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. You don't know the Schmineys? Maybe That's... he should start taking this Kentucky trip. Yeah, they're my kin. <laughs> no. Are they... You know the Mikeins, too? <laughs> no. Are, are they your ginger kin? <laughs> Hey, that's racist. All right, so 
What I brought, I brought a list here for oh, us to break boy. down. Okay. Number 10. We're not there yet. Okay, so my list tonight. Are we, are we at that point already? <gasps> we're, Seems we're at really it, yeah. fast. Well, we don't have a guest to, to talk about what they do, where they oh, come from, true. those kinds of things. Where okay. do you do? Where do you come from? I, my name is Tack. Um, he likes long walks on the beach. Yep. Oh, and, he does, and, and he'll me- burn. And men are at night. <laughs> okay. I still enjoy them, just not during the day. Okay. Um, and backgammon and men who aren't afraid to cry. <laughs> Sorry, it's a line from Airplane. Um, and uh, I do, I, I'm a podcaster. Um, you should check out my really? show. It's called The Twisted Ten is a Ooh. show I'm on. As well as Living Podcariously. Mm-hmm. Wow. And you're 40 now what? So... Check those out. And uh, we also, my, the people I do a couple podcasts with, we created a cartoon that we do it's called Get Out Penny. So go check that out on YouTube. Wow. I'm going to go right now. <laughs> and he launches spaceship into the outer space. But, you know, that's not, that's neither here nor here. <laughs> yeah, neither here nor there. Okay. So the list I brought tonight is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I've been wanting to do this list for a long time. Oh, boy. So, um, I hope uh, nobody has any objections. Well, uh, okay. Growths. Yeah, I hope nobody has any S- growths. STDs. STD. I hope nobody has any sudden deafness. Oh, no, that's an. Interesting you don't one. hope that we don't have that. <laughs> no, I do. I do. You hope we do have that. <laughs> no, I do. Oh, jeez. So the list sudden, I brought. Sudden acute deafness syndrome. That makes me so sad. What? <laughs> that got it. That got it. I see what you're doing. What? Too. <laughs> you guys, I, I can't hear anything. Oh, boy. Oh, turn, got her, it. turn her back up over there. <laughs> Number 10. No, we're not there. Oh. Yet. Okay, so the top 10 list I have tonight is top 10. What's wrong? Nothing. Okay. The top 10. I just like to throw Twisted in there because that's the name of the show. Top 10 Twisted Serial Killers. Ooh. Oh, I like it. Ooh. Yes, this is the. Uh, the heavy hitters, as they like to refer to them as. Okay. Captain Crunch, Golden <clears throat> Grams. Right. That's right. They murder them. Oof. Um, the first thing I like, I like to talk about a little bit about serial killers. Okay. All right. So. Um, this chair's noisy. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So, uh, well, what makes it a serial killer versus just somebody who kills a few people? They do right? it more than once. Lots of them. They have a similar like mo style. kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, they also have to be like if I go out and murder six people within an hour, I'm not considered a serial killer. Really? Hmm. It has to be I think within I think a three month span or something like that. So if hmm. you kill six people an hour for three months, then you're okay. Then I'm a serial killer. Yes. Okay. Yes, as long as there's also something, you know, tying them together somehow. You know. So, and then another thing I like to talk about, there's two types of serial killers, okay? One is what's called a product killer. Product killer. That's for the cereal that you eat. (laughs) Do you get toys in some of them? There's uh, two kinds. There's called a product and a process killer, okay? Okay. So, a product killer is only killing to for a purpose, like whether to have the body, to do something with the body, or to do something... I didn't do it. The cat was rubbing it. I saw her doing it. Hang on, I'll go. Carry carry on, sir. Okay. Re- repeat that, maybe. Okay, so yeah, product and process killer. A product killer is a person that wants the product at the end, so kills for the purpose of having a product. Or, like a finger? Yeah, a finger or the body itself. Something or, for their collection. Exactly, correct. And then there's a process killer where they only do it because they love killing. So, And sometimes product killers don't necessarily like the killing, but they like the product afterwards. That's what they're shooting for. And a process killers just love the killing and don't give a shit about the body or anything afterwards. Okay. All right. So remember that, and we're going to talk more about that as we go through the list. Will there be a test? Sort of. Okay. Um, Good question. I will ask a question at the end. At the end of each one, I will go through and ask you: Is this a process or a product killer? Oh, no. Wait, what was, what, give me the nope, Cliff's Notes have version. Nope, he should have listened. Nope, he should have listened. Nope. What's the Cliff's Notes He'll version real quick? He'll figure it out eventually. Product? <laughs> listen to the show. <laughs> yeah, listen to the episode. Um, a product killer for the third time is somebody, when they kill somebody, they do something with the body. Ooh, okay. So they like the product of having the body. 
whether it's like she said to have something to, for a collection like a something. diorama yeah um and then there's the process killer of somebody who just enjoys killing and doesn't care oh, about okay. the body afterwards cool okay so are we ready i feel like an episode of csi number <laughs> number 10 number 10 yes ah 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 i can't do it as good <laughs> as jay sorry we're gonna start with ted bundy Ooh, okay this, didn't he sell shoes and have a redheaded wife and a hot daughter? <laughs> That's and, Al. Uh, That's this is his cousin. Yep. Oh, okay. All right, so Ted Bundy was born on, in 1946 in Vermont. Uh, he was born only to his mother. He never knew his real father. I was going to say, a father needed to help there somewhere. Yeah, but they, he never met him. Okay. Um, he was actually raised by his grandparents, and he was actually told that his grandparents were actually his real parents. And you find out until years later that... Uh, his grandparents were actually his grandparents. What? 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 Oh, you're like looking around for something. Thought I heard something. Oh. Bro, I do. It's <laughs> bugs. Oh, yeah. That's cicadas. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll cut that out. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Man, don't get distracted if I'm not looking right at you. <laughs> if, I stopped, if I stopped every time I hosted a show because somebody was not paying attention, we would never get through a fucking night. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. <laughs> Especially Jay. I'm I on just him. want your attention. I know. Okay, you can. Well, no, when you're going like, like well, I'm heard, thinking like I, it sounded almost wrong. like her vape was lo- hot, like it was oh, lit, gotcha. like going. It's in and my then purse. I, well, I part of me looking around, which distracted him, was <laughs> noticing. Oh, it's right there. It c- couldn't possibly be that. <laughs> so then I continued to look for mine. Uh, there it is. And then, <laughs> then that derailed the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we know exactly God. what happened. It's a play by play. <laughs> So, uh, Bundy was regarded as being very handsome and charismatic. Ooh, la, la. Dun, dun, dun. Women easily <laughs> took to him and earned their trust very quickly. Uh, now, he had murdered 30 plus women. Okay, so Bundy's MO was he would approach his victims in the public most of the time, sometimes dressed as a police officer or some sort of authority figure or, uh, or a neighbor. And he would pretend like he needed help. Like, can you help me move this couch into the back of my rickety van? You know, kind of a thing. I always help guys do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, after the or a murder, this is a murder sample. Okay. Um, after the murder and sexual assault, he sometimes revisited his secondary crime scenes for hours at a time, grooming and performing sexual acts with the decomposing corpses gross until petri- petrifaction and destruction by wild animals made further interaction impossible rigor mortis is petrifaction gotcha mm. he decapitated at least 12 of his victims and kept some of the severed heads in his apartment for a period of time as mementos so process he, well, i was gonna say he's wait okay, that's product. not till the end oh uh <laughs> on a few occasions he simply oh, broke into dwellings at night and bludgeoned his victims as they slept. Um, in 1989, he was executed by electric chair. I meant to say product. Now, this is, I'm also going through these very quickly because we have a short. I could do a whole hour on each of these oh, guys. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. So, Easily. So, process a product killer. Product. Product killer. Product like killer, those indeed. You like banging those dead ladies. Indeed. And keeping their heads. Gross. Yeah, and keeping their heads. What did he do with the heads, you think? Blowjobs. Yeah, um, Blowjobs. Quite possible, yeah. I'm sure. Or bowling. I mean. <laughs> well, once it got too hard to open the mouth. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Then that was placed for his hand for the bowling ball. <laughs> How's it go again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, open your mouth again. Oh. All right, moving on. Okay. Number nine. Number nine. Nine. Uh, uh, uh. Nine. Nine. <laughs> Jack the Ripper. Ooh. Do you guys know anything about Jack the Ripper? A little bit. Uh, actually, I think I listened to a time suck on Jack the Ripper. Oh, that's true. A I Dan forgot. Yeah, time suck on that. exactly. And he goes into some pretty deep details about this. So there's see. tons of stuff about this guy. Okay, he's also known as the Whitechapel Killer, also known as Leather Apron. Leather fun- Apron? Yeah. In 1888, he is believed to have murdered 11 victims between 1888 and 1891. All right. 
Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but Jack the Ripper was never caught. So we have, there's he's still. He's still out there. I, I did know that. He's still out there. Oh, yeah. no. So his, uh, his, it's a good thing we don't live in London. There's <laughs> lots and lots of theories on there's who it could be. There's tons of theories. And uh, th- again, not to you know derail you a little bit, but the time suck that Dan Cummins did goes so deep down that rabbit hole of oh, yeah. who he feels, like who Dan feels in his opinion, just based on the facts, it mm-hmm. is Jack the Ripper. Right. And I've listened to. I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts, so I've listened to tons of shows talking about serial killers, and specifically Jack the Ripper. I've listened to at least four shows talking about Jack the Ripper and their theories as well. Um, so his mo is uh, he attacks um, uh, typically involved female prostitutes who lived and worked in the slums of East uh, End of London, whose throats were cut, and prior to. Uh, abdominal mutilations. Ouch. The removal of internal organs from at least three victims led to proposals that the killer was possibly like medically trained because it was done so perfectly. Um, uh, and I think he, t- he did too. He's like, he liked to like write letters to like Scotland Yard and shit like that. And, um, so hold on a second. Um, he liked to like taunt the media and taunt the, the police and shit like that. And, uh, and, um, he would even, I think he was even like trying to go by the leather apron because it just sounded cooler, but they were like, no, nah, Jack the Ripper. Was there a reason behind the name of the leather apron? That just seems I forget odd to me. why. Um, I, I forgot to look that part up. I think it's because he actually wore like a leather apron for like while he murdered and stuff to keep I think something like that or perhaps he was a butcher and part of his normal work attire was a leather apron that he would wear Possibly. to work ah one of the potential suspects of being Jack the Ripper was a butcher <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. um so of course this is the quick version so product or process killer so he meticulously took the body parts out that he wanted but it, However, they were all them. there, though. Did he keep? I don't think he kept the body parts, did he? I like, don't, there were, there were I don't think were we missing. know. They were there, but they were just taken out. Um, the removal of internal organs from at least three victims. Um, throats were cut. Abdominal mutilations. I'm going to say process. I'm actually going to oppose you. I'm going to go product, and here's why. Because he gets so involved with the media at the time. He is more fascinated with the... Um, with the the stories behind him than he is with maybe the murder, maybe, I mean, maybe, maybe not, than the murders themselves. He's not killing just to have that exhilaration of killing someone. He wants that attention. He wants that. Wouldn't that be more process than product? I would say he's a process killer. I don't. Damn it. I, I, that's I just failed. me. I'm not saying right or wrong. That's just my opinion. It sounds to me like more of a process killer. Because it almost sounds to me the product out of this that he would get is the attention. But that's, no, that's a process. This is all speculation. There, not speculation, but this is all just a discussion. So there's no right or wrong, really. Did I did I miss up understand the definition no, of process no, you're and good. product? What's process then? Process <laughs> the enjoy the killing. That's what they, yeah, why yeah. they so do So this it. would be, in my opinion, would be product. The product that he's getting is the attention that he's getting from the and media. That, that's an interesting take. You're not wrong. There's no right or wrong. Oh, see, I'm right. <laughs> I didn't say you're right either. You didn't say you were right. I just oh. said you're not wrong. Damn. So. Well, I'm not wrong. Ooh. No, you're not wrong. Okay. I'm not wrong either. <laughs> no, you're, I never. <clears throat> never but that's not. Burn. How did she do that? She just flipped the script. <laughs> like complete 180. Women. Tack. Jeez. <laughs> Am I right? You're right. Take my girlfriend, please. All right, number eight. Number eight. Eight. Now, this one's fun. Okay. Number eight is H.H. Holmes. Yes. So, he was born as Herman Webster Mudgett. No idea why he changed his name. Poor guy. I love Mudgett. In uh, 1861. Mudgett sounds like a stew you would get in England around the circa 1650. (laughs) Right? Mudgett. Mudgett. What are you you eating tonight? Mm, We're eating Mudgett stew. Sounds just like it. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Uh, he was one of the first documented American serial killers. Holmes was uh, famous for uh, insurance fraud, cons, as well as a bigamist as well. Um, kind of a fun story that um, I had heard on a show. Something that one of the many cons and insurance things that he did <clears throat> is um, he'd gotten a huge safe um, put into his house. 
It's one of them huge like walk-in safes like banks have and shit. Like a vault. And uh, of course he got it with credit um, and had it installed. And then when it was time to pay, he never paid his bills. Like never. Uh-oh. And so when when the they were like, okay, you owe us for this payment. Is, it, like, is his name Adam Poston? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> and uh, he's like, <clears throat> well, I mean... I can't, I'm not paying you. Well, then we're going to take it back. Go ahead. It's inside my house. But if you destroy any of my walls, I'm suing your ass. And uh, he threatened to sue them if they did any destruction on his home Hmm. to get their safe back, which they would have to take out walls to get their safe back. And so they ended up just dropping the case. Oh, wow. Um, And he would do this like, okay, well, let me keep moving forward. Uh, Holmes is also most famous for his murdered castle that he built in Chicago. Okay, so to recap, a quick version of it is um, he built this huge fucking house. They call it murder castle. It's not really a castle. It's just a large, huge mansion type home. And he would, um, and it was a mystery house. So like. Things didn't make sense, so there would be stairs that led to nowhere. There would be doors that didn't go anywhere. There would, it was just weird mystery shit. Everything from trap doors to just weird shit. And he did this on purpose, so people would purposely get lost. Um, but he also used it as kind of like a bed and breakfast kind of a thing too, hmm. um, because a huge event was coming up, which was the World's Fair in Chicago. That's right. And so he took advantage of this. A lot of out of towners coming in to get murdered. <clears throat> to get <clears throat> murdered. What are you going to Chicago for? Murder. <laughs> I'm going to the World's Fair. Murder. Well, no, you're going for murder. Right? <laughs> so <laughs> to be murdered. And uh, what he would do is hire co- he would hire contractors to build portions of the house. So there wasn't somebody that knew the entire layout. He would, and then he would hire them to build a certain portion, and he would fire them and not pay them. So, oh my god yeah, he, did, he got the whole house built they for got basically to live. nothing <laughs> yeah well not everybody got to live so and he would also build like gas chambers like you know air locked rooms and shit like that where he would basically guests would come in he would put them in the room lock them and then gas them and just like enjoy watching it <laughs> that's what i call dutch oven in andrea <laughs> I'm taking her to the gas chamber. I would oh. never let you do that. You would never wake up the next day. <laughs> He's also a big bigamist as well. So another thing he would do is he would t- take staff. Um, he hired a lot of women. Um, and, of course, he was a very good-looking man, too. Um, he was also very persuasive, and women just fell in love with him pretty quickly. And so he would uh, be dating a chick or whatever, or even get married to her, and then get an insurance policy on her and then kill her. Damn. And collect insurance money. Um, and he would be married to a, a couple of women at once. Um, and they would never know because he would do this and then send them off, you know, because maybe he was in business with them as well. Well, I'm going to send you to over there for a while and then he meet some other chick. Go and, to Africa. Yeah. And then, um, so we did a lot of insurance fraud too. And it wasn't just women too. If I hired you on a staff, I'm like, well, I'm going to get an insurance policy on you. And they're okay, you know. And he would, and then he would murder him and collect insurance money. Damn. Smart. (laughs) (laughs) You were thinking it, too. I have an insurance policy, Andrea. You're (laughs) listed as a beneficiary. Don't you get any crazy ideas. Mm. Did you eat that cookie brownie for your birthday yet? Not yet. (laughs) Okay. So, like, when we started the Academy Media, is that why you got us all insurance policies? You're goddamn right. (laughs) They call me Adam H.H. Holmes Poston. (laughs) Holmes used the World's Fair to get victims to stay in his castle and would murder them by toxic gas. That's just one of the many ways he did it. And send them down a body. He had a body chute in the, down below as Ooh. well. Like you in would the basement. need one at I think, Murder Castle, duh. I right? think I did that on spring break one year when I was 21. You went down the Murder Castle body chute? A body chute. <clears throat> I did a body chute. It's where somebody poured liquor it's in a, a girl's body belly shot. button. Ho, ho, ho. And I sucked it out so of So funny. I forgot I to did, laugh. I didn't know where he was going with that. I was like, what? <laughs> Um, he confessed to 27 murders. However, due to the circumstances, the number is actually unknown. Some speculate into the hundreds and others say that it may have been less. Wow. So um, he did die. Uh, he was executed in 1896 at age 34. Man, so young, young man. Yeah. Um, so a product of process killer. He did so much killer. with his life. He did. He, he did accomplished a lot. A, lot. a small amount. And what I'm really excited about, too, is there's a movie coming out. Mm. And you know who's going to play H.H. H. Holmes in the movie? 
Who do you think? Johnny would, Depp. You're not far off. Close. <laughs> well, let's give you a hint. It's going to be directed by Martin Scorsese, so you know it's going to be fucking good. Who's the Who's the actor? That's what That's we're what trying I'm to guess. I don't know. Have Who you do you think is going to play? I don't know Martin Scorsese movie. Help me out here. Who's his go-to actor that's in all of his fucking movies? Why don't you name one for me? I don't know a Scorsese <laughs> film the by line. the director. Uh, oh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, The Departed. Never um, saw it. Holy shit, dude. You have to see that I've fucking never, movie. I've never seen The Departed. It's so good. Um, I can't think of all. The suspense is killing me. I will me. just give you. Um, it's Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, oh so. okay. Oh, and I also never saw the one with the bear. <laughs> oh, he'll be home. I never saw that one either. What's that one called? Paddington Bear. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The one with Leonardo DiCaprio in the wilderness and he's Teddy. fighting the bear. <laughs> Teddy. <laughs> Ted. Ted, yeah. Hey, how's your mother? Oh, a bear in the Say jungle. That me. would be the Jungle Book. No. Baloo. Okay, so uh, I think, I'm not sure when it's coming. I think it's still in pre-production, but there definitely is an So H. he's going to play H.H. Holmes? Yes. Really? I think he's, I think it's perfect, perfectly casted. He'll do awesome. Um, Process. Very good. So, uh, what do you say? Process product. It, it. I might be reading into this too much, but it seems like he's killing everybody for tangible gains, i.e., these insurance policies, or for whatever the reason. I'd say product because so he's that's not a collection. Money is a good collection. Money, huh? Money's a great yeah, collection. Yeah, but it's not like of the dead body or of his kill. True. He kills for the fun of killing. Did he define it as process or product has to collect something off of the body? That's or kind of an example from the for the killing. Yeah. I think he was doing it for tangible I gains. say process, but you also, I think you have a good point as well. But then it would make his previous answer should be process too, because that's for tangible gains. Product. For yeah, tangible gains. But you said you it was process in the last one. No, he said product. I said product in the last one. Because the baby. product was. Um, the product was for notoriety. Yeah. Or right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's just sticking with product for everything. <laughs> what? Got it. All right. <laughs> why she, attack? Why she? Oh, me? I see. He's just saying it every time. <laughs> what? Okay. That way, fifty percent of the time, he's right. Yeah. <laughs> why, why are you so mean? <laughs> it's just she just fucking with you. All right. Uh, moving on. All right. God, I can do an hour on each of these. I'm telling you, there's so many stories to tell. Number seven. Number seven. Seven. Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer. Nice. So, he was born in Wisconsin in 1960. Wisconsin. Um, he was also gay and struggled being gay in the 1980s, which is hard. And some even speculate that if he was alive today at that age, he probably wouldn't have been a serial killer. Just mm-hmm. Not as much. Just because it's, yeah, because it's more accepted now than it was. Not he as much repression. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Although diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, it's a... What the hell? Schizo what the hell? Schizo what the hell? Oh, my oh, God, that's schiz- horrible. Schizotypal personality disorder. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And a psychotic disorder. Dahmer was found to be legally sane at his trial. Convicted of 15 of the 16 murders he had committed in Wisconsin, Dahmer was sentenced to 15 terms of life imprisonment on February 15, 1992. He was later sentenced to a 16th term of life imprisonment for additional homicide he committed in 1978. Damn. He's still in prison, isn't he, or did he die? Uh, I'm going to go over that. Okay. His MO in 1987, this is an example of one of his killings. I think this was his first murder. <clears throat> you guys holding hands? She's rubbing my hand. Oh, that's precious. <laughs> uh, in 1987, he encountered a 25-year-old named Stephen Tuomi at a bar and pursued, uh, persuaded him to return to the Ambassador Hotel where Dahmer had rented a room for the evening. According to Dahmer, he had no intentions of murdering him, but simply intended to drug and rape him as he lay unconscious, you know, because he has morals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the following morning, however, he awoke to find Tuomi lying beneath him on the bed, his chest crushed in and blood seeping from his mouth. He had really rough sex. <laughs> yeah, with bruises on Dahmer's own fists and one forearm. Dahmer stated he had absolutely no memory of having killed Tuomi and later informed investigators that he simply could not believe this had happened. To dispose of the body, he purchased a large suitcase in which he transported the body to his grandmother's residence. There, one week later, he severed the head, arms, and legs from the torso, then filleted the bones 
from the body before cutting the flesh into pieces small enough to handle. God damn. He then placed the flesh inside plastic garbage bags. He wrapped the bones inside a sheet and pounded them into splinters with a sledgehammer. The entire dismemberment process took Dahmer approximately two hours to complete, and all the remains, including the severed head, were disposed of in the trash. Two, wait, wait, wait. Two hours? Yeah. I want you to think about this. That means you killing somebody and then filleting them, then pounding their bones into splinters. He's a That's first, he took him, first he took it to his grandma's, though. That's fast. For a total of two, uh, for a total of two weeks following Tuomi's murder, Dahmer retained the victim's head wrapped in a blanket. After two weeks, Dahmer boiled the head in a mixture of Soilex, an alkaline-based industrial detergent, and bleach in an effort to retain the skull, which he then used as a stimulus for masturbation. Eventually, the skull was rendered too brittle for this bleaching process, and was also pulverized and disposed of. Damn. Um. Obviously, he was very famous for eating uh, his victims. Yeah. And he would even do things as far as, like, he would cut off penises and then just use that, like, masturbate with and suck on, things like that, you know? Um, Guy's a little fucked in the head. Yes. Um, Well, well, I got stories here. Okay, so at the end, he died. He was beaten to death by a fellow inmate in 1994. Um. Product or process? This one's pretty... Product. Product. Absolutely. Product. Well, told you go, he always picks I'm going to go process on this one just <laughs> to disagree with Andrew. No, I'm kidding. No, he was 100%. You're pick product. You always pick it. This is product for sure. Yeah, this is... He is like uh, a perfect example of a product killer. Yeah. Because he actually hated killing. He actually he admitted it. He actually had to get drunk in order to do it. So he was... He also had a drinking problem too. So he would go out to bars and get drunk. And then he would pick up a guy. Um, mm. So he'd, you, most of the time he'd be pretty hammered when he murdered somebody. So when he's talking about it, he doesn't remember it, most likely he blacked out from alcohol. Most that makes likely. sense. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so he actually hated killing, didn't like it, but loved the product. Hmm. That's what got him off. And he it sexually pleased him. So. Freak! What was kind of funny, too, is that he lived... In the ghetto, <laughs> which is <laughs> kind of funny. He was like the only white man within like a three mile radius. That's why you always fear <laughs> the normal looking guy in the ghetto. <laughs> always yeah. fear that guy. And all Not the neighbors say. were like, I had no idea. You know, like, <laughs> he was always so quiet. Yeah. I just thought that was kind of a little funny tidbit. <clears throat> uh, any questions on Dahmer? No. I'm good. Is he alive? He's still alive. No, no, I said he was killed in 1984. Oh, he was 1994. 1994. He beaten to death by another inmate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Number six. Number six. six. BTK killer. Yes. Do you guys know anything about BTK? Yeah, I watched lots of documentaries on that oh, one. Oh, yeah? Yep. You know what BTK them, stands for? Him, huh? what's, what's BTK stand for? Bind him, kill him. That's BK. She's, she's on the right path, though. Tie him. BTK. Do you want me to just tell you? Bind, tie, kill? Close. That's what I said first. No, you said it's bind, close. Kill. It's not tie, it's a torture. Torture. Bind, torture, Bind, kill. torture, kill. Yeah. Ooh. All right, so BTK Killer was born as Dennis Lynn Raider in 1945 in Kansas. He had 10 victims between 74 to 91. He loved taunting police with letters as well, signing the name BTK. Uh, BTK stands for a blind torture or bind, torture, kill. In his letters to police, Raider asked if his writings... Oh, this is actually kind of funny. Okay, so he liked to write lots of letters and stuff to the police, taunting them and things like that. So I thought this was pretty funny. Okay, so in his letters to police, Raider asked if his... If his... I guess for his writings, if he put it on a floppy disk, could it be traced? Like he asked the police <laughs> this. If I put my stuff on a disc and give it to you, can you trace that? <laughs> um, no. The police um, answered his question in a newspaper because that's how they talked um, and posted it in whatever newspaper and said that it would be safe to use a disc. It's fine. It was not traceable. Mm. On February 16, 2005, Raider sent a purple 1.44 megabyte Memorex floppy disc to Fox TV affiliate KSAS TV in Wichita. And, of course, the police traced the disc and discovered the whereabouts of him. 
Currently, and now he's currently serving time or life in prison, 10 consecutive life sentences, 175 years. Damn. Um, so, yeah. Wait, so they, they consider life only 17.5 years long? That's Sometimes stupid. you can get life in prison, which is, I think, roughly like 25 plus years or whatever. And then, of course, get out on parole. You can be out in like 15 years. Hmm. When you get technically life in prison, really only means 10 to 15 years, really. Of course, it's all in good behavior. That's not much life gone. Not life. So, I mean, if he's serving 175 years, so. You might make it. <laughs> <laughs> so, fingers crossed. <laughs> So that is number six. So now what we do here is we're going to take a little break. Process. All right. Oh, sorry. Yes, thank Ooh. you. I forgot to write that down. Bind, Process or product killer? Torture <clears throat> and kill. You didn't say anything about him keeping anything. No. So his was all about the kill. Yeah. So yeah, he is, he is a process killer. Process killer. Copycat. What? <laughs> so mean. So when we come back, a little teaser for you. When we come back, we're going to hear about female serial killer. Ooh. It's not just the boys. She's going to chop off that dick. She's a crazy <laughs> bitch. <laughs> All right, we'll be right Hey, Tech, you ever have that conversation with your girl about where to eat dinner and it always turns into that back and forth? I don't know, you pick. <laughs> Yeah, every once in a while, yeah. Yeah, well, I've got an answer for you next time that comes up. Oh, yeah? Where at? The Salty Fox in Melbourne off of Old Galley Boulevard. Oh, nice. You know, I've actually been there, and the food was pretty awesome. Hell yeah, it was. They offer a great selection of paninis, shareable appetizers, soups and salads, and one of the best desserts I've ever had, the Funky Monkey. Oh, yeah. My favorite was the vintage options. They got this meal called Ramen Noodle on Crack. You just got to try it out. Done. That's definitely what I'm getting next time. Put the fun between your legs at the Salty Fox every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. with the Old Galley Arts District Bike Crawl. It's a four-mile bicycle ride down Pineapple Avenue with stops for food and beer all along the route. Be sure to visit the Salty Fox every Sunday for brunch from 11 to 4. Hey, isn't that the $10 bottomless mimosas brunch? Sure is. Enjoy your brunch while the Salty Fox's DJ spins throwbacks and top 40 hits. Salty Fox is located in the downtown O'Galley Art District on O'Galley Boulevard. Check them out on Facebook at facebook.com slash saltyfoxmelbourne or online at thesaltyfox.net. Hey listeners, be sure to mention you heard about the Salty Fox on our show and you'll get 10% off your meals. Village Idiot Pub. You locals know about it. You guys from out of town have to check them out. Village Idiot Pub is now a proud sponsor with Living Podcariously and the Twisted Ten Podcasts. It's more than just about commercials, though. The cast here will be taking our show on the road to Village Idiot to record some episodes as well as hold events. They have over 30 beers on tap, including ciders and Hefeweizen, my favorite, as well as hundreds of bottle choices. Adam, you forgot my favorite, all the delicious wine. (laughs) So get your friends together and enjoy the board games, puzzles, and the giant Jenga. Let the owner Jason, as well as the rest of the staff there, take excellent care of your beer drinking needs. Mention either one of our shows to the staff and get 10% off your tab. Tuesday is open mic, Wednesday is trivia, Thursday is karaoke, Friday and Saturday night are live music. Visit them at 4 Harrison Street, Suite 103, Cocoa, Florida, or Village Idiot Pub on Facebook. And don't forget, they are a dog-friendly location, so bring your friends, family, and fur babies. like sci-fi, AI, and technology? Do you enjoy going on tangents and down random rabbit holes of a subject? Then join me and my friends each week on Brokebot Mountain as some artificially intelligent people attempt to walk through a maze that explores themes of existence and free thought in sci-fi TV, movies, and books. The conversations are unique and bring an unusual perspective to the genre and can literally go anywhere. And we do mean anywhere. You can find us at BlazingCaribouStudios.com or look for Brokebot Mountain on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play or anywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts.
Hey, it's Adam. If you enjoy the hosts or the content of The Twisted Ten, be sure to check out our other show. It's called Living Podcariously. While The Twisted Ten may get crass and explicit occasionally, it holds no water to Living Podcariously. We do get a little bit more rough and raw on that show. We have a lot of fun producing it and have had some awesome guests. And as always, thanks for listening. And welcome back to the Twisted Ten. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about serial killers in this episode, Andrea. Serial killers? Serial <gasps> killers. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no. <laughs> so to recap, the 10 through 6, we had number 10 was Ted Bundy. Number 9 love was Jack the Ripper. <laughs> number 8 was H.H. H. Holmes. Number 7 was Jeffrey Dahmer. And number 6 was the BTK killer. Mm. Bacon, lettuce, and tomato. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which brings us to number five. Sink. Five. What did you say? Sink. 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 Oh. Sink. Oh. Sink. Oh. Cinco? Sink. Well, okay then. All right. So number five is, Andrea guessed during the break, it is Eileen Warnos. Mm-hmm. She is uh, going to be the only woman in this list. Not that there weren't other women serial killers, but crazy um, bitch. Yeah. So she was born in Michigan in 1956. Well, there's her problem. I'm sorry. <laughs> she has seven victims between 1989 and 1990. Her MO is uh, all her victims were men. Um, she claimed that her first victim was a uh, self defense claiming that he tried to rape her, and so she shot him and uh, left his body in a wooded area. All of her victims she had shot and then left their body somewhere. A couple of them, I think, were never found. Were they in place? Well, that was going to be part of my question. Were they set in places that are she would have expected somebody to find them, like in a no. public park? Or- no, she just no, wasn't no. good at hiding them. Okay. Yeah. She's basically just shot him and left him. Okay. Some were even found on the side of the road, so... <clears throat> um, obviously, there's a movie made about Methodist too. Call it, uh, blah, 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 blah. It's easy for you to say. Charlize Theron and uh, Christina Ricci started a movie called Monster. Oh, I didn't know that was based on her. Yeah. Oh, yep, that's yep. cool. Okay. That's when Charlize Theron got fugly. Yeah. yeah <laughs> but she, she looks did. exactly like her. Though. It was awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was like her thing. Like, uh, And it was also Florida-based as well. So. Yes. Crazy. Yep, yep, yep. Welcome to Florida. She we pretend to be a prostitute. Hmm. Yep. And get that when the guys would want to sleep with her, then she would kill them. It's the best reason not to go to a prostitute. Well, she was more of like a lot lizard, though. She would be at the truck stops, right? Yeah. Truckers were a lot of her victims, or a few of their victims. And yeah, mostly people on the road. So. And she died of a lethal injection in Florida in 2002 at the age of 46. Wow. Not, Bye, not very long ago. Nope. <laughs> uh, product or process? process? Process. Obviously, process. Yeah. And it, somebody even speculates saying, I don't even know. Because if she I was get, doing something with the bodies, that'd be different. If she yeah, was like yeah. setting them up in some sort She's of. Definitely not a product killer. For position. sure. Not a product killer. She yeah. was killing them because they were raping women by having sex with well, prostitutes. She would also mind. try to justify her murders like that, oh, too. Okay. But right. it wasn't, you know, she was a straight up monster. Yeah. She, was, <laughs> gotcha. she was a terrible person. <laughs> So that was number five. All right. Number four? Four. Cat. Okay. What are you counting in? I don't French. Know. French. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, John Wayne Gacy. Ooh, okay. Mm. Uh, he was born in 1942 in Chicago and was an American serial killer and rapist. He sexually assaulted, tortured, and murdered at least 33 Jeez. teenage boys and young men between 72 and 78. Those are years, not ages. Uh, in <laughs> Illinois. Um, so as another, he is also known as like the killer clown as well. Cause he was, did Pogo the clown that was like, you'll see fine pictures of him online where he's wearing the clown makeup and, and that picture of him online in the clown makeup. That's not him trying to be creepy. Like he didn't really murder people in the clown makeup. Right. That was a side job. He actually did it. He actually was a child for children's birthday parties. He was, um, a now clown. that's a little bit fucked up. Yeah. Um, all of Gacy's no murders were committed inside his Northwood Park ranch house. His victims were typically lured 
uh, to his address by force of de- or deception. And all but one of his victims were murdered by either asphyxiation or strangulation with a makeshift tourniquet. Hmm. His first victim was stabbed to death. Gacy buried 26 of his victims in a crawl space of his home. 26? Yes. Three other victims were buried elsewhere on his property, while the bodies of his last four victims, known victims, were discarded in the uh, De Plains River. He was running out of room. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. And so he died of lethal injection in 1994 at the age of 54. Um, Did he die in a studio? I don't get it. Studio 54. Oh. Hmm. Uh, he was pro- the product. age of 54. Product, if he's keeping the bodies. Yeah, I would say he's a product killer as well. But he got rid of some. It's because you, you nailed it. He ran out of room. <laughs> he must have <laughs> So what he, did he just keep them not because he wanted the collection of bodies, just because he didn't know where to put them, and then wow. he ran out of room and just moved on to put them somewhere else? Like He was putting them under the house in the crawlspace? He didn't really space? care yeah, if they were space. in there. Did he care? Did he go back and look at those bodies, though? Or was it kind of out of sight, out I of mind? I don't remember all that. I think, those are good questions. I think what he literally did is he started putting them in his RV uh, and then chopping them up. And then he saw his brother-in-law, Clark, out front while he was emptying his RV into the drain and said, mm-hmm. What's up, morning, Clark? Shitter's full. <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with this. Yeah. I was like, It's a long way to get there, but <laughs> yeah, you know what I did. <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right, so moving on, number three. Toi. Twa, indeed. Twat. Number twa is Richard Ramirez. Do okay. you guys know about him? I no. don't think I do. He was also known as the Night Stalker as well. Now, that sounds like a comic book name right there. <laughs> he was born in 1960 in Texas, a.k.a. the Night Stalker, was an American serial killer, rapist, and burglar. <clears throat> His highly publicized home invasion crime spree terrorized the residents of the greater Los Angeles area. <laughs> And later, the residents of San Francisco. From June 84 until August 85, prior to his capture, Ramirez was dubbed the Night Stalker by the news media. He used a wide variety of weapons, including handguns, knives, machete, a tire iron, and a hammer. Ramirez, who was an avowed Satanist, never expressed any remorse for his crimes. Now, I'm going to go back to this Satanist thing. This is in the 80s where there was the whole Satanic panic thing going on. So I don't know if that had anything to really do with it. him being a Satanist. I don't know if that had anything to do with his crime spree. Um, I think it just, he, I think he was just trying to be cool. <laughs> I don't know for sure though. Um, the judge who upheld his 13 death sentence remarked that Ramirez's deeds exhibited cruelty, callousness, and viciousness beyond any human understanding. He also had like zero remorse for what he did. Hmm. Um, this is another example of one of his, his MO on June 28th, 84, 79 year old Jenny Vico Vinco was found brutally murdered in her apartment in some city. 79. Yeah. She didn't even defend herself. She had been stabbed repeatedly while asleep in her bed (laughs) and her throat slashed so deeply that she was nearly decapitated. Ramirez's fingerprint was found on a mesh screen he removed to gain access through an open window. Let's do product process. This one's pretty cut It doesn't dry. sound like he's collecting anything. No, that sounds process. straight up process killer. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it's actually a fun story here. Well, first let me go to his death. Uh, Ramirez died of complications from B-cell lymphoma while awaiting execution on California's death row. In the B-cell? He got lymphoma in the B-cell? I don't know, said from B cell lymphoma. I know. I don't know. The lymphoma that was in the B cell. The A cell didn't have it. The D cell didn't have it. No, (laughs) no. Okay, so here's a fun story here. Adorable. This is kind of neat, and they should definitely make a movie out of this. Okay, so um, Los Angeles knew about this Night Stalker guy. They knew about Richard Ramirez. They knew that he was just terrorizing Los Angeles and San Francisco eventually. Um, he was all over the news, all over the media, you know, until finally he was, I guess he was literally just walking down a street one day in a residential area. And somebody said, that's Richard Ramirez. Oh, shit. And somebody said, where? And somebody goes, walking right there. Let's go fucking get him. So no shit. He had probably uh, 
So he saw that and caught, saw a few guys running after him. He took off. So he's running down in this residential area. It eventually turns into probably like a hundred people chasing this guy down, and they do catch him. They catch him Worst and beat the fuck out of him. Ever. Yeah, <sighs> they beat the shit out of him until finally the police showed up and arrested him. Can you imagine if that really wasn't him? It's like, my name is Jose. <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> I don't know why I went Hispanic there, but Ramirez. Uh, yeah, no, he's Hispanic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think he might have been Mexican. I can't remember, but I just look like him. <laughs> oh, we all look alike, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Racist. <laughs> yeah. But he got basically got the fuck beat out of him by like a hundred fucking people. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> pretty Christ. Fucking cool. I'm surprised he lived through that. Yeah, I, I am too. <laughs> but he did. But of course, he died from uh, B cell lymphoma. <laughs> At B cell. Yeah. <laughs> kind of fun little story. Moving on, number two. Two. Duh. 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 Uh, duh. Number duh. duh is Ted Kaczynski. Ooh, okay. Also known as Crickets. Crickets. Crickets, the Unabomber. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was waiting for you to say it. <laughs> oh, <Fuck>. okay. <laughs> he was born in Illinois in 1942, a.k.a. Unabomber. Do you know why he was called the Unabomber? Because he bombed by himself? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, it's not you and I bomber, it's you and a bomber. Oh, because of he wore a unitard? <laughs> Unicorn? Unicycle? Yeah, that's he, still he rode you. up to his crimes on a unicycle. It's still you and I. No, it's not you and I, sex. Sorry, it's from It's all of them together. It's you and a bomber. Una, 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 una. What else <clears throat> is you and a? United. Okay, it's a combination yeah. of three words put together. Can you hand me that? That's what there? I was trying to figure out. What do uh, you can need? You, can you hand me that uh, piece of paper under there? Ugly. Yeah. Nerd. Underwear. Is that uh, what you're trying I to gotcha. get? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I'll just tell you. Okay, uh, Unibomber stands for... Uni- Ugly nerd afros. No. Oh. Stands for University and Airline Bomber. Oh... That's kind of odd. Well, what he did, well, okay, first of all, Ted Kaczynski, super brilliant guy, super smart. He graduated from Harvard. Sure. Um, and he also, I forget the other school he graduated or have, has another degree from. <clears throat> um, well, let's read his backstory. Okay, so Kaczynski was born and raised in Illinois while growing up in Evergreen Park. He was a child prodigy, excelling academically from an early age. Kaczynski was accepted into Harvard. At the age of 16, where he earned an undergraduate degree, he subsequently earned a PhD in math from the University of Michigan. That's the other one. He became an uh, assistant professor at the University of California, Berkeley in 67 at age of 25. Hmm. Uh, He resigned uh, two years later. Okay, so he he was famous for um, mail bombs. He used to send bombs and mail to universities and shit like that. Um. The first mail bomb was sent in May 78 uh, to materials engineering professor Buckley Christ at Northwestern University. On May 25th, the package was found in a parking lot at the University of Illinois in Chicago with Christ's return address. The package was returned to Chris, but when Chris received the package, he noticed that it was not addressed in his own handwriting. Suspicious of a package that he had not sent, he contacted a campus police officer who opened the package, which exploded immediately. Um, Marker, oh, that was the officer. Uh, The officer required medical assistance at a hospital for his injuries to his left hand. Um, So that's kind of shit he did. Like he always set off like anonymous bombs or whatever. I remember seeing uh, an Unsolved Mysteries episode back before he was even caught talking about the Unabomber and like, and they had some like reenactments of him, like leaving a little one, like in a parking lot somewhere. And somebody right. actually witnessed that one and saw him do it. That's how we have that drawing of him with the hoodie and the glasses yep. and all that shit. <clears throat> and, but I think I don't remember. I think that one actually went off by a passerby too. Um, any questions on that one? He's a process killer. He doesn't need I would anything definitely to take away. Yeah. yeah process um he's currently still serving eight life terms without parole so. nice good lock his ass up <laughs> indeed leaves us number one these are no particular order by the way Ooh, by the way un. Un. damn it i was close yes un, una un, un, y- una. Trois, uno. Cinq. una bomber <laughs> you and i bomber 
All right, so these are in no particular order, so it's not like I love this one the best or anything. It's just sure. happens to be number one. Uh, the Zodiac Killer. Yeah, I've heard a lot about this one. Okay, this one I had to gather info pretty quickly here, and I actually didn't know a whole lot about I know a little bit about this one, but not as much as the other ones. Um, so the Zodiac Killer was a serial killer who operated in Northern California in the late 1960s and early 70s. The killer's identity still remains unknown. Uh, the Zodiac murdered victims between December 68 to October 69 by shooting and stabbing his victims. Four men and three women between the ages of 16 and 29 were targeted. Oh, that's oh, that's right. Okay, Just shooting and stabbing? That doesn't sound like something that would necessarily be repetitive. You know what I mean? That could have been coincidental. Most, most serial killers like the whole stabbing thing or strangling. Something very intimate, usually. Something like with Eileen Warnos, Eileen Warnos, she always used a gun. Like, And that's not really an MO for a serial killer, you know? Yeah. No, true. Um the killer originated the name Zodiac in a series of taunting letters sent by the local uh, Bay Area press, or sent to the press. These letters included four cryptograms. Um, of the four cryptograms sent, only one has been solved. So there's still three that have not been solved yet. Wow. Uh, five confirmed deaths, possibly up to 20 to 28. I don't understand that, but because, of course, they can't rule out... I guess some people were also claiming they were the Zodiac, but then turned out that they weren't. And uh, there could also be a lot of unsolved uh, crimes. Cold cases that are, and stuff like that. have yeah. a little hint of something close right. to that. It could have been copycat killers, too. Yeah. And, you know. There could be no Zodiac <clears throat> killer. Shooting and stabbing. It could have all been a hoax, and then people just played along. And Shooting and stabbing is pretty, I mean, that's pretty common. You know, if you're going to kill somebody, shooting and stabbing are usually right. your two number one ways to, just to do it. It's just weird, like, for a shooting, serial killer shooting. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the case has been cold, but was reopened again in 2007. Ooh. Uh, a man named Dennis Kaufman claimed that his stepfather, Jack Terrence, was the Zodiac. Uh, Kaufman turned several items over to the FBI, including a hood similar to the one worn by the Zodiac. According to new sources, DNA analysis conducted by the FBI on the items was deemed inconclusive in 2010. Um, product to process. I mean, it's hard to tell so far, especially with the information I gave you. Well, but you didn't keep sounds anything. Sounds more like a process. So definitely color, would you know? sound yeah, process. process. Agreed. Okay, so that is the list. And also another thing I was um, remembering, too, about... Uh, H.H. H. Holmes, I meant to mention this earlier, that was one of the theories, too, saying that he could have been possibly Jack the Ripper as well. Ah. That was, that's a possible theory. I don't really think that's true, but um, but they can place H.H. H. Holmes in London during the time of the murders. But then again, the M.O.s are very different. Hmm. So, whereas, like, as we discussed, Jack the Ripper was a, well, it was kind of debated here between process and product for Jack the mm -hmm. Ripper. But H.H. H. Holmes is more of a process killer, and it seemed like they didn't, the MOs didn't match. Yeah, I hear you. But, That's an awesome list, though, dude. But it's a theory. The, the serial killers is going to be a big hit. Those Whenever we have any kind of title that has anything to do with a murderer or something <clears> that's yeah. you know, crime-related, you always see the numbers True spike. crime is huge right now, yeah. especially in the podcast world. Yep, agreed. Huge. So that's all I got. It's a good list. You know who's <clears> up next out of our four. Me. Andrea. Andrea Joy. <laughs> but I don't do lists anymore. Oh, that's I right. That a long time you ago. You going to have Ginger come in and do one? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh. oh, Penny can do one. Penny can do one. I'm She's not doing old that enough to come hour. on the show. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. She What's can't a listen. podcast? <laughs> no, it's smoking mirrors. <laughs> yeah, Penny. But what are you what guys are you doing? You're ruining it. What are you about? Uh, I wish I had a character. Ooh, 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 I want to do a Twisted Ten. <laughs> Here you go, Tack. <laughs> You have to, you'll have to make that one a full animated Twisted Ten. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, that's all I got. Hey, be sure to check out our new uh, Patreon for Twisted Ten. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com slash The Twisted Ten. Indeed. We're going to have um, different goals up there. A dollar a month would be helpful, but we were going to have different goals for a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty five dollars, and fifty, I think. I think those are the different goal levels. Yes. Five thousand. Everything from uh, you getting your name mentioned on the show all the way up to us a mouth actually. Hug having you well the attack yes. i'll give a mouth hug but i will give a mouth hug for five thousand dollars a month you working with one of the cast members of your choice or you coming in to do your own show so you can uh, literally buy <laughs> your way on we can be bought 
tack, I think. We will we'll <laughs> yeah. all give mouth hugs for 5000 a month. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll be on my knees right away. <laughs> you got it. And also, check us out on uh, Twitter at uh, the Twisted 10. At the Twisted 10, yeah. Excuse me. And also our Instagram at Twisted 10 as well. Shoot us an email to show. Uh, no, it's to Sounds send us terrible an, on that. Send a, Oh, what is happening? You got to put it on that. It thing. can't touch anything on the sides. I know. There I was go. trying not to. There. All right. There we go. Send us an email to thetwisted10 at gmail.com for any show recommendations or comments or uh, uh, you want to talk to one of us or whatever, or hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash thetwisted10. We want to hear from you guys. You guys wrote a show for us recently that Jay featured one of our listeners on. Oh. Whoa. No, Tack, Tack almost fell out of his chair over there. I just remembered something. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Keep going, though. Uh, he peaked. No, but if you <laughs> if you want to participate in the show, that's what this is all about. So uh, get involved. Shoot us an email. Send us a message on Facebook. If you like one of the hosts more more so than the other, let us know. You can work with us directly to to run your show. So we're uh, we, we're happy to work with the with the listeners. And uh, thanks again for giving us those five stars on iTunes. Those five star ratings and reviews, like I say at the beginning of the show, are like pod ta- podcast currency. We legitimately can get some greater guests because of those reviews and those five star ratings. So thank you for those of you who have done it. We've got a lot of them already built up. I think there's 25 or so out there. I'll have to go back and look. Maybe mm-hmm. that's Living Pod Curious. I can't remember. But uh, thank you for the ones that have submitted those. You can also catch us on Tuesday nights on <laughs> Podcast Radio Network at 8 p.m. That's right. Also, speaking of emails, we got an email. Oh, nice. We have an email to read. Okay, this one's from uh, Bethany. I don't know. I I hate to screw your name name up. You just say first names. All right, it's from Bethany. Um, Hi, Bethany. Hey, Bethany. Bethany. She goes, hey, guys. I just listened to episode 15 about the celebrities arrested. (laughs) I have the funniest story. She goes, "Uh, Randy Travis was arrested for public intoxication again. In front of my little town in in Texas, a uh, little town in Texas church, church, uh, church, Texas. No, Little Sanger, Texas. Oh, Little Sanger, in Texas. front of the church. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Hold on, Texas. No one knew what this town was until Randy found it drunk. No one knew what this town was until they found until, drunk Randy running yeah. around the little white church. Uh, he got into a fight with his girlfriend, and I believe he got lost. And she does leave a link to the story. In here, nice. But here's a link. It was a talk of the town for a really long time. Uh, it probably made history in my high school. <laughs> anyway, cheers, nice, <laughs> Bethany. Thank you for the email. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I told her, I was like, "Oh, a great story." I told her I'd uh, share the story on the show, and she goes, "Oh my gosh, no way! Thank you, love the show." So nice. That's Yay, awesome, Bethany. Yeah. So thanks for sending that, Bethany. Appreciate it. And uh, remember episode 15. Who's, whose episode was that? That's mine. Yeah, it was yours. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> that that was seems a fun so show. long ago, though. I know, right? It's over a year ago now. <laughs> She's got some episodes to listen to. She needs to catch up. She needs to do some catch up. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. She but, needs catch up. <laughs> she needs catch up. Mama Tomato, Papa Tomato, Baby Tomato. Let's send her some, some catch up. <laughs> Andrea walked all over my joke. <laughs> it's now. okay. I knew the joke anyway. Oh. <laughs> All right, you ready to get out of here? Yeah, man, let's get out of here. Ready to get my punishment. (laughs) Well, uh, thank you for listening to us this week, guys. We appreciate it. My name's Adam. And I'm Tack. And I'm Andrea Joy. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Smack. Wait, wait, wait. Don't hit stop on the episode just yet. Hey, this is Tack from the podcast you just listened to. And if you enjoy Living Podcariously or The Twisted Ten, then you're going to love my new podcast I co-host with my lifelong buddy, Ron Caniff. It's called You're 40, Now What? It's about the trials and tribulations of turning 40 and just getting through life. So check it out on iTunes, Google Play Music, and anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thanks. Now go give someone a mouth hug.